So uh, we'll give everybody just another minute to come in, then we'll get started. In the meantime, uh, show of hands. Who's in Orlando right now? All right, good. It's about, about half the audience. Good. Um, how many of you have downloaded .NET Nuke 7? Okay, about a third. Um, how many of you have ever designed a skin before? All right. How many of you are staying over for the weekend to go to Disney? Nice, nice, about the same number, about the same number. All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to DNN World. Hope you guys are learning things and exploring .NET Nuke. Uh, t today we're going to be talking about designing for .NET Nuke. Um, it's going to be kind of a, a, a session where we balance um, you know, design topic, skinning topic, uh, with kind of a user experience tour of .NET Nuke 7. Um, my name is Ryan Morgan, and this is Ralph Williams. We both work for Arrow Consulting and Design. We are a consulting company based in West Palm Beach, Florida. We specialize in .NET Nuke. Um, we do uh, development, uh, design, um, and we've actually gotten to do a little bit of, little bit of cool things that, that have made it into the core. And um, you know, we, we designed the DNN6 skin, the Dark Knight skin. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've done some work you know, for .NET Nuke, as well as uh, you know, some, some, some sites we're really proud of out in the community. You might have seen me uh, in, the, in the keynote. I was the one that looked really nervous to be on camera. Uh, I have no problem talking to people, but for some reason when I get in front of a camera, I think about every single word I say, which actually is from what I hear is atypical. So, <laughs> atypical, yeah. Uh, so a little about me. Um, I'm the founder of, .NET, or of uh, Arrow Consulting and Design. Um, I'm one of the managing partners at Arrow. Uh, I've uh, written, you know, written a little, little bit. You know, I was a co-author for the DNN5 book for Rocks. Um, written a couple of MSDN articles for, uh, about SharePoint. Um, you know, I've uh, also been all over the place. Uh, been doing .NET Nuke since .NET Nuke was not .NET Nuke. Um, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to be part of the community. Hi, I'm Ralph Williams. And what's that? No, no wrap this year. Have to keep everybody, you know, anticipating when it's going to be here. So, um, yeah. So I'm Ralph Williams. Uh, I'm a UX and graphic designer for Error Consulting, and I've also been working with DNN quite as long as Ryan has, but since version three. Um, so I've been working with it quite a while, and I've seen a lot of changes come through myself. Um, I've also spoken at several uh, code camps around Day of DNNs. And uh, last year presented also at the DNN World. And uh, on DNN six, I actually created the template, the website template that was Awesome Cycles. And if you want to read more about DNN skinning, you can see my my blog at ralphwims.com. And there's a lot of other really good DNN blogs at dynamicblogs.com. So to talk a little bit about uh, you know what's what what we're talking about today is designing for for DNN. And uh, there's a lot of uh, changes, some really nice changes for DNN 7. Um, we've got new skins. There's an updated CSS. There's a new control panel. And the z-indexing, which I don't know if, if any of you all, how many have skinned with DNN 6? And how many of you all have like, noticed the z-indexing issues? There were some really, yeah, yeah. So they've resolved that. <laughs> Yeah, so they've resolved that, um, so it should be much more enjoyable to not have to fight against it near as much. Uh, there's also new, new UI styles and improved module settings menu, and the drag and drop framework uh, is now included in the, the core, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. So just to kind of give you an overview, uh, since we're talking about skinning, just kind of wanted to kind of get everybody on the level playing field to know what a skin is. Um, basically, it's a 
design applied to the standard DNM portal and uh, it allows you to change the layout and the design and it also allows you to put uh, place where you want your content to be on the site. Uh, it lets you customize you know, completely how you, how you want your site to look and you can switch them out and change them while leaving the content the same. The containers is actually what goes around the modules and it's the, the frame for the module itself and so you can change those and um, it allows for more flexibility for different sections of your content. <clears throat> the DNN skin package is the, uh, the zip file that is included with HTML layout images and may also include a style sheet. It's not really always a zip file. Um, there's actually now the DNN, it's, in, it's installed as an extension. And um, so it's much more clean and smooth. And within that package is the, the skin manifest, which basically kind of explains to DNN what all those different pieces are and everything. So just kind of, like I said, I want to give everybody a level playing field of the skin, the skin package, and what we're going to be talking about. <coughs> and also, uh, so what makes up a skin? There's basically four different parts of a skin that, that you need to, to be able to run the skin. The register controls, which are at the top of the uh, skin, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. So as you can see the top of my screen, you've got the uh, register tags there. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> also, you, you have, uh, this is where you specify your content panes. And so basically, you've got your register contr controls. Uh, you've got your HTML layout, and you have your content panes. And also skin objects, if you want to include, you know, for your login and things like that, that's, that's what all goes on your skin here. <clears throat> and also setting up the skin, uh, where you create it, you can, or how do, how do you set up DNN? So, you know, to be able to install your skin, you, you need to have a place to install it. Um, there's, there's a couple of different approaches for creating a skin. Some people like to create the skin, just start off with HTML, don't include any DNN in it. That way they can kind of run it in their local browser. I personally really like to get a local install of DNN on my computer. And the, the ways to do that is you can use the Microsoft Web Matrix, which makes it really easy, but it's really not the best way. But if you want something quick and easy to use, uh, you can use Microsoft Web Matrix, but the downside is you don't get to pick your version. It's just whichever version Web Matrix pulls in is the one you use. Also, there's Make DNN Insight by Mike Vandermeulen, and that's a really, really great tool to be able to just spin up a new site. Uh, you still need to have IIS installed and some of those different core things, but to be able to just spin, a, spin up a new site, it's fantastic. You, have, you can choose your version. If you download and have your own package that you want to install, you can choose that as well, and it's just a, a fantastic tool. And you can also uh, do it manually, and DNN has some, some good videos to, to show you how to do that. <clears throat> so that was installing DNN, and to install a skin, there's also two ways to do that. You can do it through the extensions. So you, uh, the same way that you install a module, you can install a skin that way. And it needs to use a skin package, and it has to have that, uh, that manifest file. And to create your own, you would uh, actually deploy directly to your local, and then you can go into DNN and have it uh, create the extension for you using the, the extension wizard. It's really nice. So, um, excuse me. so basically, the, the difference between the skin package and just a skin on the server. Uh, I personally feel like the doing the skin directly on the server is much easier. However, sometimes you don't have access to the server to be able to FTP or locally, so you have to create the package to be able to, you know, to give to a client or something like that. So the, the other thing is the structure of your skin, uh, of your skin package. It has your, uh, if you go into your installation, you've got a portals folder, and inside there you have a default folder and your portal ID 
uh, whichever, you know, however many portals you have, it starts with zero and just keeps going on there. Within that, you have skins folder and a containers folder. And inside the skins folder is your skin name, whatever you've named your skin. And then you have your skin.ascx. That could be whatever name you want it to be. You have your skin CSS. And you can also specify the, a, a specific CSS for each skin as well by naming it the same as your, uh, yes, thank you. <clears throat> uh, zero, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> So, so by, by default, when, when it comes with DNN, it's, it's in the uh, default folder. And so the difference between the default folder and your portal folder, the portal is host level. So that means any site that is installed on that installation of DNN has access to that skin. If you include it in just the portal level, then only that portal, you know, per por portal uh, folder, only that portal has access to it. So if maybe you have 20 different sites on there and you don't really want each client to be able to choose the other skin, then you can uh, put it in that specific folder. If you want everybody to have access to it, put it in the default folder in, in its host level. <clears throat> um, if you can go in there. All right. And then also the skin doctype.xml lets you specify your doc type that you want for your skin. Um, so uh, it's really good to, to look in the default skins that come with DNN to get an example of how they do things. And speaking of the skins, we'll look at the new skins that, are, that come with DNN. Because I know you all came for the new stuff, right? Not just to find out what a skin is, but show me the new stuff. So. All right, so this is the new Ophelia skin. And uh, I really like it. It's, it's nice and clean. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom out here. So it's got a really nice layout to it. Uh, and it's got the, the new control panel. I, I'm sure most of y'all showed it this, this morning, right? No? OK. So we've got the new control panel. <clears throat> feel like it's, it's a lot more out of the way and everything like that. So this, this is a, a good framework to start on. If you're, if you're new to skinning, um, I would definitely take a, uh, take a look at the Ophelia skin to get an idea how they do things, maybe even just tweak it, you know, um, or just um, create your own. But it's, it's a very good starting ground. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk a little bit now about the the updated CS, CSS. So, <clears throat> the def anybody that's created the skins for DNN before uh, probably knows that the default.css that came with uh, anything be before this was just, it was huge, it was bloated, and there was a lot of stuff that just kind of forced you into certain ways, and you had to do a lot of things to, to work around it, and it was really, really a pain. Uh, the new one, they've completely rewritten it from the ground up, and it includes uh, the reset.css, Eric Meyer's CSS reset, which is nice. I mean, I've, that's the first thing I do in my skin. CSS is put in there, but I don't have to worry about it now. They also split it into a typography.css. Uh, and so if you're looking for your .normal classes and things like that, that's where you can find it. Now, I don't touch the default.css. I feel like if it's core, then you just leave it alone. That way, if you need to move the skin somewhere else, you're going to be on the same, uh, same environment. Um, but it gives you a good idea of how the styles have been uh, created so that you know how you need to write your styles to change what they have. And so we'll take a look at the CSS. So you can see here, there's the, uh, the imports, 
with a URL, the uh, reset.css. And then we also have the topography CSS. And this C CSS, if you can scroll down a little bit, is very well commented. It's much more organized than how it used to be. And um, so anything that you want to figure out how DNN is doing something, uh, like I said, it's, it's just all right there. It's commented, easy to, to follow. Um, they, they really did a good job on that. Uh, can you open up the, um, let's see what I do. I'll take a, we'll take a look at the topography CSS. So here's where you're going to find all of your basic uh, styles that anything to do with your topography. Uh, you can see they've, they've got your, all your H1s and things like that, your head, dot, uh, subhead, and if you scroll down a little bit. So here's your paragraph, and then there's your normal classes and things like that. So any time, for any of you who, who don't know what that's about, uh, basically any time that you have a, um, a module or something like that, then DNN adds the class.normal around that module. And so it lets you be able to just specify, you know, if you're just dealing with content that's not really a part of the skin, but it's content within the modules, that's where the dot .normal uh, comes into play. <clears throat> yep. So. Uh, like I said, very well organized and just uh, hats off to the good work they've done. Uh, just to interject a little bit here. Um, you know, uh, is, is Ryan in here, Ryan Martinez? No. Okay. So, so, so Donna Nuke, um, the, the the thing that they've done um, is they, 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 they that I'm really excited about is, is they've added a UX team, um, and so so really we we now have people focused on user experience, and 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 as you take a look at the platform and as we kind of dive into it a little bit later, you guys are going to see that. Um, the thing I want to point out though um, is is that we've had these styles for a long time. So those of you who've been with Donna Nuke for a while, you know the dot normal that that w when you're creating a skin that you need to override dot normal if you want if you want things to look you know. If, if you want the skin to look like yours in, instead of the, the core down at new skin, right? Um, you know that, that normal red is, is what it looks like when there's a you know when there's a validation error, right? And you know that uh, that link button is what the the hyperlink is going to get. So so basically, the, the, all of these styles are styles that have been around in down new, you know for a long, long time. Um, and as module developers, and you know, whether it's third party or, or you know, kind of you know, uh, work for hire, we, we implement these to make sure that as the skin you know, gets updated, that the, 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 uh, the design's gonna update the, 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 uh, the module as well, right? So what, what Ryan told us that they did, um, that, that I really liked, was that they, they really kind of came from a from an approach of, let's kind of start with ground zero, right? So, so let's, let's take the default.css, let's pull everything out. And, and so they, they actually went through an exercise of pulling everything out, and then selectively putting things back in. So you know, over, over the course of the years, it's kind of been the opposite. It's like, it's uh, okay, so, so now we've got default.css, we need to add some new stuff to it. So, so that, you know, that, that's how we got the, the control panel styles as part of our default.css. We don't need that on our, on our full skin, right? Um, so, so what they did is, you know, that, that, that's kind of the reasoning for, for the reorganization. So that's why typography is split out. That's why the admin is split out. It's split out because they really took the approach of, what can we do to offer the bare minimum, um, that, and and then and then kind of add things in selectively, right? So so for those of you who are developing for mobile, um, you know you, you know that you really have to focus on page size, and you really have to think about this. So um, you know for for us, you know we when we did the Hilton mobile site, we, we had to spend a lot of time um, getting the uh, getting the size of the CSS files down, um, and, and and getting the size of the page down so that it you know could load in an acceptable time. We'll talk about that. Uh, Henry, I'll do that tomorrow afternoon. We're actually going to walk through some of the tools we use to do that. Um, but, but really kind of the point is that, that, that they try to start from scratch um, and then add in only what they needed so that you all are going to get a much better experience and a much better performance out of these CSS files. Okay, so yep. thank you.
So next is the, the CSS hierarchy. This has changed a little bit, uh, not drastically, but it's, it's changed a little. So whenever you're just in regular mode, you're not logged in as admin or anything like that, this is the structure of what your CSS will be. So you have your normal, uh, I mean your, your default CSS, and that links to the reset CSS and topography CSS. Um, and, th and that's really there so you can leverage it. You know, so you can leverage the styles that are already there. You don't have to build everything from the ground up. And then next, and, and this is important uh, for those of you who aren't really familiar with CSS, you know, it's, it's cascading, so whatever comes last is the most important. So the, the, whatever's top, that's, you know, that's kind of the, looks there first, but then it keeps overriding as you go, go down. So the default.css is your core, your base. So it cascades. Like, yeah, like the style, the sheets, that, that their styles, they cascade, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so and then after, after, uh, yeah, and then after the uh, default CSS and reset and topography, then your module CSS loads in. So any specific uh, styles that module developers have included for their module, for layout, or things like that, hopefully they've not done inline styles. And please don't do inline styles in your modules. Thank you. Um, so hopefully, hopefully they've you know used their CSS file appropriately. Um, and then what loads next is your skin.css and the core, the way they've got it, which I think is a really good uh, approach, the way they've done it. They've got the topography.css imports and loads after that, and then the content.css loads in after that as well. And then after your skin is now your container, so now your each container that you create can have a, a style that overrides even your skin.css. And then the last to load is portal.css. I say sort of because it only actually loads if you actually go and save in the uh, admin. So if you go to admin um, site settings and then there's a style sheet tab, you can override any styles there and that's the very last to load, but it's, it's empty and if you don't hit save then it won't load. So it's kind of nice to not have to make that extra call to, to get a CSS file. Now whenever you log in, things change. And this is, this is great. Uh, this is another one of those changes that they made, which is fantastic. They took out all of the admin CSS that's been loading in the, uh, the default.css, and they created their own style sheet for it. So it now has the, um, loads the default CSS, same as it did before. And then after that is your admin CSS. So any of your, uh, any of your pop-ups or anything like that that uh, admin uses, it's loading then after that. Then your module CSS, again your skin CSS, and then again the, portal, the container and portal, and the last to load is the control panel, or the control bar CSS. So it loads in after everything else is lo loaded in, and they do that, uh, it's no longer loaded in line, so it's not gonna mess, mess with your styles. So, um, so they really spent a lot of time fixing it, making it better, and uh, making it easier to work with. So. Speaking of the new control panel, uh, like I said, it's loaded afterwards. It's got its own uh, CSS, and it doesn't interfere with your customized skin styles. They used to be a pain. Sometimes you make a change in your stuff, and you know it just kind of mess up the control panel. And it can still be overridden, like in your skin CSS. You can still override it. You know, if if you want to change it to white background, you know, I mean, you don't need to. It looks good as is, but some people really, really want that granular control. So you can still get to it, and you can still uh, style it if you want to. Again, the z-indexing, uh, this is a great, great thing. So it's reset at the end of the HTML. They come in and then they basically just make it a level playing field for all of your stuff. It's not gonna interfere with how your styles are in there and your z-indexing, but they basically just kind of uh, flatten everything and then they put in the admin. So if you're in admin mode, you have the module settings and things like that for each module, and that loads in on top of everything appropriately. Your pop-ups load in on top of everything appropriately. And uh, they also say that the, the z-indexing uh, stays low. They don't have these like, you know, 900, z-indexes of 900 and things like that like they had before. They try to keep them around 10. I think I might have seen one in there at 11 or something like that, so. And also, the manage button for six was really annoying. Uh, I, I always just put a, some CSS in there to move it to the right. Um, I hope not. Okay, sure. Um, no. 
No, I, I liked the manage button. It's just the placement of it really was, yeah, nice yes, time. yes. Uh, the placement, so I, like I said, I always just, with CSS, moved it over to the right side so that it wasn't in the way of my module title and any of that other kind of stuff. But they've replaced it with, uh, they've kind of taken a step back to how it used to be, and now they have module actions that are actually um, not in the manage button, but it's just controls at the top of the module. So that's nice. And also they've updated the, oh, yes, so you have a question. No, they didn't. That was that was that was the first thing I saw when they moved when they got when they moved it backwards. Um, okay. Um, I know I used to try to you know want to place things certain ways because just depending on how my skin was, the uh, you know maybe I couldn't quite get to the controls. But I think they've really fixed a lot of that stuff now, so you don't really it's not as big of a deal. But no, so it, you don't have to worry about including that in there in, in your containers. It's just automatically in there. Um, Yep, and so the, the UI has been changed, it's been updated. So we've got the old one on the left and then the new one on the right. Uh, it, it's minimal changes, but this is more minimal. The, the, the old one had the black bar across the top. Yeah, minimal changes, but it's more minimal. And I like minimal. I like, I like clean and minimal. So um, anyway, this one had a, a black bar across the top, and it was, it, if you had like a green website, and then you pop up this, login or you know a pop-up then it's black and it just didn't really look right to me from a designer standpoint so this one really is free of, of all of that so you, it's I think it's gonna blend in a lot better with uh, with your design things like that so now I'm gonna pass this over to Ryan see he likes his talk time See my screen okay? Perfect. Okay, so um, real quick show of hands, how many developers do we have in the room? How many people have developed a module before? Okay, good. And uh, how many skinners in the room, designers? All right, good. My people. My people. All right. I'm both too. So, uh, so, so the first thing I want to point out, um, just don't want to breeze past this, uh, so that there are new things um, and, and, and new exciting things available uh, to, to skinners and, and, and Donna Nuke. Um, but if you look at this skin, this is the, uh, this is the Ophelia skin. Um, you know, this looks the same as the other skin. So if you already know how to skin, you don't now not know how to skin. You still know how to skin, okay? Uh, so so the, that, that skill is still on your resume, and you can now you can now say, uh, I can skin for five, six, and seven, okay? So you, you already know how to do it. Um, you, know, they, you still have the content panes, you still have the register. You know, a lot of the content that, that Ralph was covering uh, you know, is content we've covered in other you know, presentations about skinning. So we want to make sure that, that everybody just kind of understands that um, DNN7 skinning is DNN skinning, okay? So the, the, there are some exciting changes, you know, that, but it, it, you know, for, for folks who are, are conscious of page load, um, you know, for, for folks who want to have more control, and we covered that in the different CSS. But I just want to make sure that everybody understands that DNN 7 skinning is still DNN skinning. Okay? I'm going to switch back over here. <clears throat> so, as I was saying earlier, um, we have an exciting new development with the Corp. Um, and that, that they have uh, a user experience folks. Um, so, so Israel, who's one of the product managers, um, he, he, he's, he's also very uh, user experience minded. You know, we, we've gotten to work with him over the last year on a couple of projects. Um, and, and so, is it showing up yet? Ruh -ruh. You broke it. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> is it showing up at all? Oh. Okay, so he's. He's using beta office software to present. You're in so much trouble. Nice. Okay. Classy. 
Real classy. So um, as I was saying, what we have now is, is uh, you know, folks at Donna Nuke who are user experience minded. Um, I think we, you know, we, we've always had that. We've always had folks who, you know, who cared about you know, what the platform looked like. Um, but it's, it, it's good to have you know, folks who are kind of specifically focused on that. So you know, what, what, what that's going to mean is that you know, we're, we're going to see you know, a, a little bit more of a professional approach to how they communicate um, patterns, how they communicate styles. Um, you know, what are things that I'll point out uh, as soon as I can get this deck up, which I have it up now. I got it. I don't trust you anymore. <laughs> oh, the microphone's on. Blast. Oh, and recording? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, almost back. Okay. So what, what, what that means is that we now are going to have um, you know, a, a little bit more professional um, uh, things that are offered to us. So, um, you know, w w what we're going to cover now is, is uh, you know, s some of the user experience patterns that they've handed out, um, and, and these are all pulled from a from a pattern sheet. And so, you know, th this will be available for for download. You know, once seven comes out, uh, but this is the this is the pattern sheet um, that, that that we're working from right here. Um, and and so, you, some of you have have seen a, a user experience pattern sheet before and some of you haven't. Um, but, but basically what, what we have here is, is a design before we get into you know, developing modules, before they got into developing the platform, they said you know, th this, is, this is the design, this is the experience we're going for. And then beyond that, when you have a control that does this, here's an example, here's a pattern that you're supposed to follow. You know, so, so there's a lot in here. Um, you, know, you see the progress bar there, you know, we'll, we'll cover some of that. Um, you know, some of my favorites that they have in here, if this were going faster and it's not. Um, it's my favorites they have in here. You know, they, they, they have a nice, uh, a, a nice demonstration of what a grid should look like, you know, what contextual help should look like. Um, so, so really, you know, like I said, we're, we're looking at a, at, at a real professional um, approach to, you know, to, to, to communicating not only within .NET New, but externally, these are what the patterns should look like. These are the patterns for, for developing controls, and this is what the application should look like. Uh, you know, what, what, one, of the, one of the real strengths that, that, that Apple had when they came out with the iPhone was that um, the applications all, all you know, looked and acted relatively the same. Um, you know, we, when, when you go into an Apple, uh, you, when you go into an iPhone app, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna have the buttons at the bottom, and it's gonna have, you know, kind of those, those same, those same, uh, you know, those same patterns, you know, the same concepts. And when you have those same concepts, and those same concepts are, are implemented not only within the core platform, but externally by module developers and folks who are who are developing for the platform, you know, you, you're gonna have that seamless that seamless effect, that seamless experience. And, and that's really where the benefit of, of you know, having, having folks like Ryan and Israel distribute these, these pattern sheets and, and, and distribute you know, really, really quality examples is that we're gonna end up being able to you know, have a more consistent experience. So all of you in the room that raised your hand and said you're module developers, um, when, when, when this becomes available, I want you to go download this, take a look at it, um, and, and, and take a look at the examples that are already in the platform, right? So you've got, you've got good examples in the platform. You know, they, you, you've, got, you've got quality folks working on this, um, and, and really you've got good examples to follow. So you know, go, go take a look at that, and, and when you're doing development, you know, just take that into mind, and, and, and really you're gonna create a, a much better experience for the folks that are using your applications. So I'm gonna run through a couple of these. Um, so, so one of the new things that's in uh, that's in that's in DNN seven is a, is a drag and drop framework. Um, so, so the, the, there is drag and drop that's part of the control panel. We'll take a look at this. Um, but, but one of the things that, that Ryan was Ryan Martinez was telling us about when, when we were talking about this was that he was excited that, that that they not only created drag and drop that was just for use in the, in the control panel, but they made it so it was exposed. You know, that, that the folks could use it as a you know the framework or, or as a or as control base, right? So when you want to implement um, drag and drop, you know, take a look at what they did in the control panel, um, and, and, and uh, he, he did say that they're going to be coming out with, with a guide and a blog about how to use it, um, but you know, for, for concepts like drag and dropping between two lists, you'll be able to do that, um, and, then, and then the drag and drop framework that, that, we, that, that we'll be able to see in the control panel, you know, you, you'll see that as well. Um, so I talked a little bit about, this, about, the, uh, about the user experience pattern guide, um, but one of the other things that's really nice is that when you go to the, um, when you go to the website, you're going to actually see a, a standard style guide. Um, and so, so I'm going to show you this right now, jumping over to DNN 7. Um, after I resize this to fit on this abysmally small screen. 
Okay. Oh dear. Okay, give me a little bit. Okay. So um, right when you install, right under the About Us in the default installation, there's a style guide. And so what I would encourage you all to do as, as, as you know, folks who are developing skins and also folks who are developing modules, um, come take a look at this. Because th th this has the uh, examples of, of the styles that are, that are coming in that default style. Um, you know, before I hired Ralph, uh, he, he did some subcontractor work for me. And he did this really neat thing. Uh, we had him develop a skin for us. And, and when he delivered the skin, he also delivered a page. And that, and, and, and that page that went on there had every style that was in the skin. And, and, and so, so then, you know, when, when my folks were, when they got the skin back from him and they went to go, you know, build the website out, they had an example of all the styles that were being used and, and they were implemented in the skin. So they didn't have to go kind of you know, try and look in, in, the, in the CSS file and figure out, okay, what color is that going to be? They went to a page and it was, you know, similar to this where, you know, they, they were able to go and say, oh, okay, so if, if I want to use the H1, that's going to look like that. If I want to use the H2, it's going to look like that. So we got the same thing here. And, you know, it was a good enough experience for me that I hired him. So... Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's pretty good. Um, so, so you can see that that these are these are the the button styles. Um, these are form buttons, um, lists, unordered lists. Uh, he, here's here's that grid that I was talking about. So you can see that's got a, a nice hover effect. Um, you know, the the, the 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 other thing that I would, I would tell you to do um, if you're using Internet Explorer, shame on you. <coughs> um, but you can hit F12. And you can just click any of these, and it'll show you the actual style. So actually, let me click uh, the image align left. So you can just go take a look, and, th and there's your class, image left. Oops, I should turn off my email. <laughs> Check out this awesome website. It's kind of inappropriate, not safe for work. <laughs> 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 All right, so there's your image line right. Uh, but what, what you're able to do, um, th yeah, this, this one's cool. I like this, the Polaroid style. So. You can see this, that you've got the class image left and image Polaroid. And what that does is it, it does that wrap around there. So you've got that nice effect. If I get rid of this, you can kind of see what that looks like. See how it's got that nice. Is that, is that coming through on the screen okay? It's got like the nice Polaroid effect. So th th this is something for you all to take a look at when you download and install the beta. Um, you know, the, the, this, is, this is a nice way to get yourself introduced to the, to the, to the skins and the styles that are part of it. Um, you know, I, I definitely recommend for those of you to, that deliver work to clients. This is a, this is a great thing to do for your clients. Um, you know, this is a, like I said, this is something that, that, that Ralph showed us when, when he was a sub, and you know, I became a client. <laughs> All right, so jumping back to the presentation. I just want to go through a couple of styles and just point these out. So the progress bar, you're going to see um, an instance of this in the install wizard. Um, you know, drop down styles. So, so we, we've, we've got styles that are lined out if you want to do multi-select checkboxes, um, if you want to do you know, inline images and the drop downs. So the, the, these are things like if, if you take a look through the, through the application of DNN7, um, they, they got rid of all you know, just basic select lists or, or, or ASP drop down lists. And they're using the Telera control consistently across. So you're going to see that in, in all the admins and, and basically all, everything that, that comes out from Don and Nuke. So you know, if, if you want to follow that, again, that's going to be a way that, that, that you're, that you're skins and your modules are going to look the same as, as, the, uh, as Don and Newt. So there's some other styles to go through. Um, actually, the, why don't we jump out of this and, I, and I'll, I'll actually just show you these live on the site. It's not, I don't think it looks that great on that screen up there. So, oh, and, and I would be, look at how beautiful those little girls are. Mm. Doesn't that make you want to go home? <laughs> All right. So, I'm, I need to come out of full screen mode. Okay, there we go. So uh, the, what I want to show is um, you know, one of the things that, that, I, 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 that I really enjoyed um, and when I went through this uh, for the first time was I, I was really impressed by, by the new installation wizard. Has, has anybody installed DNN7 yet? Is it, and, and I don't think they showed this in the keynote yet, did they? Okay, good. I get to show you something new. All right, so so this is the um, this is the installation wizard for for .NET 7. Um, you'll notice that this is very very uh, minimized or minimalized, yeah, minimalized uh, from from the last version. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this out. Uh, you see that it's got default selections here. 
Um, I'm going to use SQL Server. And daemon7 install. OK, I'm going to click Continue. So w w one of the things that they did that, that, um, that, that I really like in DNet 7 is that they moved, am I missing something? Oh, no, it went. There we go, OK. So the, it, it used to be that, that you had to answer a lot of questions that were not really that you didn't really need to answer before you could continue. Um, so, so you know, you don't need to set up your SMTP server before you install .NET Nuke. That's just not necessary, <laughs> right? Um, and, and so they, they pulled that out. They said, okay, we're only going to ask the questions that are necessary. We're going to try and streamline it so it's a lot easier to, to look at, a lot easier to, to, uh, you know, to install, and really try and make it so that folks are not, um, you know, they're not intimidated. The other thing is, we, you know, we've got this nice progress bar again. You guys saw this in the, in the pattern guide? So, so you, you can see how, how this is coming into the platform. Um, and and it's, you know, it's giving you contextual feedback. So it's saying, this is what we're doing. We already did the file and folder permissions check, database installation. We created a super user website. Now it's ready to go. So w the other thing is, uh, w once you click view website, this is going to take you to the website. Um, and, and where before, um, you, know, you, you had kind of these, these uh, advanced tasks that you would do that were part of the installation wizard. Instead of that now, we've got this contextual help that's going to pop up. So as soon as you come to the website, you're going to get this nice pop-up that is going to load. Yeah, there we go. OK, so um, it, it, we've got this nice pop-up. So if, if you haven't used .NET Nuke, you know, it's going to give you the basics of working with .NET Nuke. You know, it's going to give you, you know, some, some news, some highlights with, with DNN. Um, and then the, the other thing I want to point out here, um, is they have this already an expert? Click on the advanced settings. So if if you really liked all those extra things that you could tweak on the on the uh, on the installation wizard, don't despair. You can still get to it. Um, right after you install, you can go to the advanced settings. So I'm going to click set advanced settings, and this is going to take me to some of those things that, that we were looking at earlier. So you've got the ability to set your skins. Um, there's your SMTP server, so you can set that. It's good. Um, also, you know, if you wanted to install optional modules, it's all a nice way for you to if you say, okay, I've got it installed, and, and really, you know, again, the focus is to try and have a have a minimal barrier to get the application installed and get folks working with it. After they get it installed, they say, okay, now it's installed. Now, if you want to kind of do some of those advanced tasks, you can. Otherwise, you know, if, if you're just trying to you know, figure your way around, you're trying to understand and get introduced to it, you can do that as well. So um, the next thing I want to point out uh, in terms of showing you some of, some of the uh, implementations of the patterns, um, we'll take a look at going in for messages. So uh, the, the messages has, has an implementation of, of some of the patterns that, that were in there. And I, I really like this. So if I click Compose New Message, um, you know, th th this has this nice, uh, so this nice inline search. And you can have, uh, again, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that. Uh, it's got this nice you know, name with a wrapped around the box. So if you want to delete it, you, know, you can just click the X. You know, really intuitive, really easy to use. So you know, if you want to add, send a message to Ralph, send a message to Ryan. And that's going to do that. Uh, so, you know, so, so that, that's an implementation of, of some of the patterns. You know, I showed you the progress bar. I showed you the, you know, the selection of users. Um, the other thing that, that is, uh, you know, definitely a, a, a big, a big shift um, in, in how and how uh, and how folks work with that. I knew um, is is uh, you know, the the change of the edit page. So, um, you know, but before we had the concept of being in view mode or being in edit mode, but it was like a little drop down. And how many people have, have gotten a panic call from their client saying, I, I can't get in to edit things. I don't know why, because they're stuck in view mode. Or, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, so, so this is something that, you know, that, that uh, you know, they, they try to simplify the experience. They try to make it you know, uh, you know, compare, comparable with, with other experiences with, with content management systems. Um, you know, the, the, there's really kind of the, the uh, concept of going into edit mode for a page. Right? So if we go in, we click edit this page. We're now in edit mode, and so you can see, you know, where, where before, you know, we would have the little manage button that would kind of you'd 
hover over it, and then you try and grab it before it went away, and it was a really... Okay, who loved, who loved the manage button bar? The manage button. Nice, okay. Is Joe in the room yet? Okay. We had a big debate about this in Charlotte. Oh, this is being recorded. <laughs> Dope! Uh, for the folks recording, if you could just re rewind a little bit. Cut, starting now. All right, so, so, so what, what's going on here is that you know, now we, we have the, um, we, we, we have the, 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 the manage, right? So, so instead of having a manage, um, you know, the modules, again, for the module developers in the room, um, you know, the, the module actions, you, you can add module actions and, and, and that allows you to have things that, that pop into that, that, that menu right there. So you've got edit content in my work. Those are both, those are both uh, module actions. So w one of the things that, that we were talking about um, before, you know, I, I think there's still some, some work that they're, you know, some things they're trying to f uh, figure out in the flow here. You know, you, you have to go into edit mode to be able to get to those actions. And so if there are actions that are exposed to, to, you know, to non-administrator users that you don't want to have access to the edit page, you know, it makes sense for that to, to not be available. So uh, I, I think they're, they're still kind of working through, you know, w what that's going to be like. So you know, just, just be aware that right now, um, in, in, in this version of the beta, that all of your module actions are not exposed until you're in edit mode for the page. Um, so, so take that into consideration when you're, when you're working with your modules. Take a look, you know, keep an eye on the, uh, on, on the betas as they come out, if that affects your modules or, or the modules you've developed. Um, so, so like I said, you know, you, you've got edit mode for the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close edit mode. And, and now I don't have the, uh, the manage links anywhere. Um, so if I go back into edit mode, uh, you can see that, that uh, you know, we, we have this, you know, the ability to move up and down just like we did before. That's where you go into settings. Um, if, if we bring up the settings interface, you know, the, this is like what, what Ralph was showing earlier. It's a, it's, it, it's a lot less style and it's a lot less kind of bubbly. It's more kind of that, that flat, muted um, style. You know, the, the, for, for those of you that have downloaded uh, uh, Visual Studio, the latest version of Visual Studio, has the same kind of concept of kind of a muted style. I like it. Um, so not everybody likes it, but I like it. Um, and uh, a lot of designers like it too. Um, so the last thing I'll, that I'll show here before I open it up for questions um, is we go to add new module. And so this is the new control panel if you haven't seen this. Um, so, so, so this kicked us into, uh, this kicked us into edit mode for the page. And now we can see the, the modules that are here. And I'll try to find one that, actually I'll just go to the, back to the area. So I'll go to the HTML Pro. So you can see we've got the contextual help. So as I'm hovering over that, can you guys see that? Drag this module to a new location. So we've got the, the contextual help that we've been talking about. And then we can drag and drop this in. Drag the module here. Ta-da. Drag and drop. OK. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, before I do that, I want to just go ahead and appropriately distract you during the question process. Uh, if you want to go ahead and fill out the, the, what is this, the survey? The speaker rating. So if you could just rate Ralph, don't, don't rate me on here, because we want to get a good speaker rating, okay? Good speaker ratings are good. Yeah, let's zoom down to questions and answers. All right, so we've got hands up all over the room. I'm picking you. For, for drag and drop modules, that's available for existing modules. So um, when I went into all categories, that, that, that showed me all of, all of the modules that were there. Um, you have the ability to categorize your modules as well so that they'll show up um, you know, in the comment or the, and things like that. So, so you know, I think it kind of gets lost in the all categories. So you, know, you, you might want to take a look at, at how your modules are, are categorized as well. Are there differences between community and pro versions? Um, uh, there are lots of them, um, but uh, it, as, as it relates to skinning, no. Okay. What does a rich text editor look like? Um, uh, it's it, it's still Telerik, I believe it's still Telerik. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll double check, but since I don't know the answer right off the bat, stump the. Stump the presenter, you get a USB hub. Oh, I should have done that with the last one. Now you're going to try and come up with better questions. Nice catch. Bad throw. All right, any more questions? In the back.
So, so the question was, are you able to customize layout and styles better in DNN7? Well, like the other things like, Gotcha. So, so the question is, it, it seems like it's kind of a little bit more specific to the logout button. Um, I know that there are some some uh, some attributes on the on the login logout that allow you to specify what the login logout text is. If you wanted to insert some classes into that, you'd be able to do that, um, and, and you'd be able to do that pretty simply with jQuery. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's specific to DNN seven. Uh, I, I think it's probably just more of a more of a technique question. But, and also, it's it's a lot easier to uh, to find your existing style. It's a lot easier to find your existing styles with your default.css now. So if you want to go um, look to see how they've got it and be able to, that way you can actually target it better exactly how they're doing it. So it's, it's a good guide for it, yeah. Yes? While, while you brought up jQuery. I did. Uh, why are we seeing sessions here on Knockout if jQuery is used so prevalently through the core? So the question is, why are we seeing sessions on Knockout because while jQuery is prevalent in the core. Um, so Knockout has a dependency on, on jQuery, first of all. So, so Knockout is, uh, jQuery is part of Knockout. Um, the reason why we're talking about it is because it's new and it's exciting. Um, you know, so so you know, if you haven't seen Knockout, um, it's, 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 it's definitely powerful. Uh, and, 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 and you know, especially doing, th doing things with forms, doing things with templates. Uh, there's some nice things that you can do with Knockout. You know, we, we've got a project where we're using Knockout Extensively, um, uh, it's not on a new project, but uh, you know we, we we're we're definitely excited about what you can do with with Knockout, and 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 yeah, I, I think we're starting to scratch the surface on, on some of the you know presentations, some of the topics that you're seeing out there, um, but but some of the stuff that you can do with Knockout is really powerful, and so so getting the word out that it's part of the core, and so that you know model developers and 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 you know and skinners as well are starting to use it. I think it's good for for .NET Nuke in general. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, there is the mode, when you go into edit mode, that the area of the page is dimmable, it's dimmed until you hover over it, and the question is, can you turn that off? Of course, it's going to be an admin.css. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. What happened to the layout view? What happened to layout view? It's still there. It's, yeah, it's, it's in the uh, drop down. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess you could repeat Yeah, so, so the question is, what, what happened to layout view? So we, we talked about edit page. Um, you can see that there is the, the view and layout mode option right there. And if I zoom in, you can actually see it. Then, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But you, you can check that and say, edit this page. And then, then now you can see it in layout mode. So yeah, it, it still exists in the back. Uh, so, so converting a DNN six to DNN seven skin. Um, so, uh, uh, the question is: Is it seamless? So, it depends. Um, so, <laughs> as always, if you have dependencies on on the control panel styles or, or styles that are in admin.css, then yeah, you're going to have to do some work. Um, but if, if 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 you're doing your skins, you know, kind of the, uh, the approach that we generally have is is that we override the things that we need to override, but otherwise we create our own styles. You know, so the normal, normal red head, subhead, those things we override to make the style match our design. But 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 other than that, we don't we try not to depend on too much. So if anything changes in the core, then we're not building on shifting sand, right? So if 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 you kind of take that approach, then then you're not going to have any changes. Um, if you take the approach that um, you know, that that you need to. Uh, you know, that, that you're implementing stuff out of the core and, and you're overriding it, then, then, you, then you are going to have some work to do. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. Can you speak up? Yeah, so, so, so I, I mean, you, you, the question is, will the Z index issues just go away? Um, yes, we're hoping so. Um, you, you can quote, Ryan Martinez on that. Um, we'll give you his email address afterwards. We'll put it up on the screen. Um, but you know, the, the, the answer is yes, you're supposed to be able to do that. Um, yeah, obviously, you're going to want to install it and test it. But you know, it, you know, we, we took a look at the skin earlier, and it, and it looked just like a DNN skin. So, so yeah, the, the, the assumption is that you won't have to make you know, major reworks. Uh, it, it's, it's more that, that you have you know, the added value of having styles that you weren't already using, um, just not part of the payload that comes out in every request. Uh, we'll take uh, three more questions. Uh, 
the question is, uh, can you drag and drop modules around as well as out of the control panel? Yes. Yeah, they, they, they brought that back. I, th that was in DNN for a while. What? That's not in there right now. There right now. It w I, I thought it was. Okay, Ralph corrected me, so Ralph gets a USB hub. <laughs> um, in the back, oh, he left. So I guess, let me see, where was he? Ah, oh, you were hidden. All right, shovel pass. All right, two more questions. Go ahead. Um, does it does the drag and drop work if you're editing in a tablet? Here you go. <laughs> Come up and get it at the end. All right, one more question. In the back. There is. Yeah, actually, we 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 had the we, sorry. The, the question is: Is there is there um, discussion around supporting less uh, or or a CSS framework like that? Um, so so the, we we actually had the same discussion with with Ryan when we talked to him last week about the latest version of the beta. And this is this is the the beta. So this just came out on Friday. Yeah. So we had a conversation with with him. We asked the same question, especially once we saw that there were a couple of different style sheets now, and they kind of broke it out a little bit. Yeah, that, that's the first thing that, that we want to talk about. All right, how do we combine those into one? Um, and and so the the answer was was yes. They're looking at it. Uh, I, I, uh, the, 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 there's kind of the impression right now that we're in the same place that we were a couple of years ago when we were trying to decide it was going to be prototype or jQuery that was going to be kind of the, the one that won out. Um, you know, and, and, and folks that kind of tied themselves to prototype had some rework to do. I, I, I think we're still kind of in that in that same mode with less right now. There's another there's another competing framework. SaaS, SAS thank you. Um, so 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 they, they, when, when we talked to Ryan, he said they're evaluating both of those both of those frameworks, SAS and, and less. Um, and 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 you know, I, I, I think we're, we're kind of waiting before we jump in on one. Um, so you you'll probably see that you know next year, you know, but, but you're not going to see that in this release of the platform. So. That's it for our presentation. Um, we, we, we are gold sponsors, so we, we've got a booth in the, in the lobby. Um, come by and see us. Uh, when, one thing I want to point out is uh, we're consultants, so we do this for money. Um, so if you'd like to give us money to do these services, we'd be happy to do it for you. Um, also, we have an, an, e an e-commerce platform that we're, that we're demonstrating. Uh, it's going to be in beta at the end of this year. So for those of you who have tried to do e-commerce, uh, we finally have an answer for it. So come by our booth, and we'll show you hotcakes. Thank you very much. <laughs>